The structure, the structure of the faculty, the structure of the uh, whole university, uh, I find, uh, and I'm not criticizing, I mean, uh, this, is, this is what I have experienced. The lack of transparency here in Canada is, to me, quite amazing. In uh, where I worked before, uh, um, there was less hierarchy and there was more transparency. Uh, maybe too much transparency in, 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 uh, at some times, where everybody uh, uh, had a right to participate in uh, decisions that would matter to them and to their faculty. While here, it's more closed. It, it's, uh, uh, it's not as transparent. And also, as a professor, I have way more power here than I would have in uh, Sweden. For example, the use of teaching assistants. It took me two years to understand what, what was, how I was going to use teaching assistants because I'm used to being in charge of uh, everything I do myself. And research assistants, I haven't used uh, even to this day because my research is unique for what I do and I don't really know how to include research assistants in my work. And maybe that's a disadvantage for me, I don't know. Um, also, um, yeah, that, that's basically some major, uh, and also of course uh, universities are uh, not as old here and don't have the same traditions uh, as in Europe and you can't expect that. And there's a lot of uh, advantages here I find, so it's very difficult to compare the two because you always find advantages and disadvantages. But there are quite a few. And also the, the process on how to study for a master's or a PhD, a PhD for example, it, take, it takes way longer where I come from to get your PhD, between five and ten years, while in some universities you can get it in three, four. And it's impossible basically to get a PhD before you're 30 years of age. It's unheard of.